What does year one of Oregon in the Big Ten look like? I'm going to go through some of the film on both the offensive and defensive side to go through what Oregon's might be able to run this season. So last season, Jermaine Quisnard and Folly Dante were the two go-to guys for Oregon. They are both graduated, no longer on the team. And I think Quisnard especially, there is kind of a transfer in TJ Bamba that I think is going to come in and fill a lot of his role. We're going to look at a Quisnard pick and roll first because he operated a lot out of pick and roll just with the ball in his hands, being able to get downhill and create. So we'll go through it here for a second. You're going to see eventually he's going to flip the screen and Dante is going to flip the screen. And so now Quiznar is going to use it to get downhill. And what Quiznar was really, really good at was applying some pressure on the paint, getting the mid range, using his size and strength to get all the way down to the rim. And that's what he's going to do here. He's going to absorb contact. He's going to create it again, absorb contact again, and just then kind of get to this little bit of a floater over the defense, just operating in that, you know, eight to 15 foot mark. So now we'll look at a clip from TJ Bamba incoming transfer from Villanova, who has a kind of similar uh, build and kind of style, I think, to what Quiznard played last year. So this is gonna be him right here. He's gonna sort of just slip out of the screen. More importantly, he's gonna step up and get a pick and roll. And so like Quiznard, Bamba, acted a lot with the ball in his hands in pick and roll. I think Bamba is probably spotted up a bit more on the perimeter off ball, but still lots of pick and rolls, lots of on ball reps for Bamba. And he's similar in the fact that like, he wants to use his size to get downhill and kind of create strength or uh, create space with his strength like he does there. I mean, really just burying that shoulder into his defender as he drives right here. So using that to create space and now we can get all the way to the rim, convert pretty well. And so I just think a lot of the style and usage is going to be very similar. Another area that I think could be similar is the kind of isolations. And Quiznar got a lot of them, especially if you remember the Creighton NCAA tournament game. At, at times, it literally was just give him the ball and let everybody clear out of the way. And he almost carried them to a victory in the tournament that way. So one way that they liked to do it with Quiznar was kind of set a screen like this and get him anywhere from the 15 foot mark to like right at the top of the key get him up the ball up here and pretty much just space from there and so from here you're just gonna see it is it is quite simply going to be one-on-one -on -one basketball let me go make a play let me go get a bucket and again he had that common theme of like getting downhill wanting to use kind of um, his his size his strength to create kind of leverage and some space finish around the rim finish in the paint like he does right here now bamba himself didn't iso much at all last season part of just the villanova offense more than anything but he does, I think, have it in him, and we're going to go through an example of one of the few times he did. So this time Villanova just gets the switch, and that's going to allow Bamba to ISO. So now he's just going to be here, sizing up his defender and wanting to make his move to get downhill. And so, like I said, Bamba didn't do it a ton last year, but I think he has the build and kind of the fit to take some of those reps if needed for Oregon's offense at times. So ISO here again, the common theme is going to be just the ability to get downhill. He gets the defender off like off balance just a little bit with this move right here and then boom he's going to attack that inside like hip hits inside shoulder get downhill all the way to the rim and convert now one reason why oregon may not have to iso as much this season is the emergence of jackson jackson shellstad he was the freshman point guard really really good for oregon but now going into year two this could be more of his offense and his team and we're one that he's going to run a lot of pick and roll he's you know six foot guard but really good facilitator really really good score and so we're going to look at a play here. You're going to see the ball being moved across the top. And this is going to be Shellstad coming across and kind of going to be flipping this screen right here. And what he was really, really good at in terms of scoring was getting in the mid-range area. He was very, very efficient, had a good pull-up. And part of the reason that is kind of the shiftiness that he has. So you're going to see right here, he, at being a smaller guard, he doesn't always want to get all the way to the rim. But with a defender on his hip, he's just going to stop, pull back a little bit. I mean, and this is still just a really tough shot. But... He has that shot making to him, and I expect a big year from him in year two. Now I'm curious to see with Shellstad kind of becoming the primary guy or one of the two primary guys on offense, instead of more of like the second to third option is what does his facilitating look like? Last year, it was still very good assist numbers, but it wasn't elite or anything of that nature, in part because of what Oregon's offense was, Quiznar touches and Folly Dante touches. There's lots of other factors that go into it, but I think he still showed promise in the opportunities that he was given. Now that it's going to be more of his team, what does it look like? And so Oregon oftentimes will run this kind of too high ball screen. 
Now on this one, Shellstad's gonna use his speed to immediately get downhill. And so with the two ball screens, the first guy is gonna pop and Evans is going to more dive to the rim. And this is the guy that's guarding the popper. And so right here, I just really like Shellstad's ability to engage this defender and keep him engaged. And you're gonna see this last little dribble right here. That's just gonna make the bit or the defender even that much more engaged. And all that Shellstad's been wanting to do is open up the opportunity for his guy to get a shot like he does here. Really good execution, high IQ play, and I'm excited to see more. Now, if you're going to go to a higher pick and roll offense, even more so than last year for Oregon, you have to surround them with shooters and or rollers and especially shooters. That's what we're going to focus on here because I think Oregon's going to play a little bit more up-tempo, a little bit more spaced out, and they're going to have the guys to do it. One of them being Chadrian Tracy. And so on this play right here, you can see the ball come up again, kind of this too high ball screen. First guy's going to pop, second guy's going to roll. And so part of this is, I think, going to be just UCLA miscommunication. The, the This is this right here is this defender or guarding him. He's going to stay. And so Shell Stash is going to have the easy pass here. And so, but just creating those little looks, right? And, and the ability to, I have an opening. I need to take it and knock it down. Having guys like that, like Tracy, is going to be big for Oregon. Another guy that fits that mold is incoming transfer Brandon Angel, and he was really, really efficient shooter, one of the most efficient players really in the country last season. And so his ability to kind of space the floor is also gonna be big. He's gonna be the one sort of setting this first screen here. He has the ability to be a pick and pop guy if Oregon ever wants to go to that. But here more, you're just gonna see him kind of space out. And so like in Oregon scenario, this is Shellstad, this is maybe Kwame Evans. And so then he's going to be kind of spaced on this weak side. And then as soon as the roller takes his defender in, Shellstad's going to definitely be able to, like Stanford does here, just make that kick out pass, allow him to get his feet set, an open look, and he is going to make a lot of open shots if you give him the opportunity. Sophomore Kwame Evans is going to be one of the more interesting players, I think, to monitor. He has a ton, a ton of upside. He played really well during his freshman season. And similar to Shellstad is going to just be in a larger role this season. And so I think there's a few ways that he can be used. And one of them is going to be spacing out on the perimeter and just kind of seeing what he's able to do. Um, if he is playing the four, if he is playing the five, either way, just being able to kind of pull bigs out of the paint and force them to guard him. And so you're going to see him right here. He's just going to be kind of spacing out in the corner. I will rewind a bit because sometimes he is also in the short corner area. But here, kind of is going to space out to the corner. Once his man rotates, easy pass to him. Not the great pass, but a good catch by him. Ability to get set and fire it up and knock it down. Now, Evans didn't shoot great from three last season. He was like 26% from three. So that is going to have to develop. But this year, I think he could play more of the pure five. He definitely did at times last season. But given Oregon's kind of big room, I think there is potential for him to play more and Oregon to play more wings and just kind of this more athletic up-tempo lineup. And so if that is going to be the case, if we're running this, if Oregon's running this pick and roll heavy offense, somebody's going to have to be the roller. And in a lot of cases, that is going to be Evan then. And so you're going to see right here, nothing really happens on that first screen, but still a good dive. Ball's going to keep moving around. And okay, now we're going to come and set another one. And this one, once this big gets engaged, there's no help at all on the weak side. I mean, Evans is, I mean, anybody really can do this, but Evans is very, very athletic where even if there wasn't as much space where pretty much everybody could probably operate, even if there are guys peeled in, like he has the athleticism to catch and go up over the top of defenders. And I'm really, really excited to see how he's used. Now, moving to the defensive side of the ball, we're gonna look first at what Oregon did last season against pick and roll. Now with Dante, it was always just this deep drop. And, and I think Kwame Evans or a guy like Supreme Cook or Nate Brittle, those are all guys that probably will also play drop coverage. So even though this one specifically is Dante, I think it translates to this year. And so what I mean by that deep drop is that Dante here, he's gonna be the one covering the um, big who's setting the screen right here. He's sometimes bigs and drop coverage will start up here and move their way back. He oftentimes would just kind of stay patient, like a uh, station down here. And so now what that does is it forces ball handlers to go away from him and away from the rim. Guys took a lot of pull-ups against Oregon. And they, they forced a lot of those shots and those kind of mid-range shots, especially if they're contested, are the shots that defenses generally want to force. 
One thing that's been pretty consistent for Oregon's defense is trying to limit catch and shoot shots. They were in uh, the top seven percentile in terms of time rank. Now they did struggle defending the three point line. They were 256 last season in the country, but they try to run guys off the lines or at least force them to put a dribble on the on the on the ground. And so we're going to look at a play here. High pick and roll, a couple of them right here. You're going to see one thing to really watch or look at is there's not a lot of help. Now, part of it is that Dante or whoever it is, the big, their drop, whether whoever it be this year, is that Oregon, I think, is going to trust their rim protectors. And so they're going to not provide as much help elsewhere. And so now when this kickout happens, no catch and shoot can happen there. You're going to flow into kind of this handoff and another pick and roll right here again. There's definitely like, it's not like there's no help ever. This guy will step in and bump the roller if he needs to, but not a ton of help. And so what they're just trying to do is exactly like this. Force guys off the line, force them into pull-ups like here. Now there's two concepts that I want to go through for Oregon. They do run zone and they do run press um, a good bit of the time. Not like the most in the country by far, but they still do run it a decent bit. So I just want to take it through here. 2-3 uh, zone is generally what they're going to run or defensively if they are in zone. Normal 2-3 zone. I don't think there's anything too crazy about it. You have your guards up top. Now, what helps make them have a lot of good potential is aside from Shellstad, they're going to have 6 foot 5 plus pretty much everywhere. Um, if Kwame Evans is the center, they'll still have like a 6'7", six, 6'8 six, guy here. And Evans, we're going to talk about his defensive versatility in a minute, but he's so elite that he can just kind of cover up a lot of holes defensively. So 2-3 zone, ball get moves around. They do, I think, at times, and we're going to look at one here where when the clock gets like 15-ish, they'll flow into more of a man-to-man. -man. So you're going to see the pick and roll and like the drop coverage here, forcing the pull-up. But at times they'll go back to man. At times they just stick in that 2-3. They also do have the press like I mentioned previously. So we'll look at that here. It's after a make. And so they'll they'll press makes even some misses, but not usually. Usually it's just after makes. Now, sometimes they're going to be way up here and trying to really press. Other times they're fine content to like this of just trying to jump near half court. That's what's going to happen here. And I mean, you can see it's not like this is the craziest press in the world or the most intense, but they just want to kind of speed guys up. And they will also usually send a second trap here because oftentimes they'll kind of drop back into a zone. So sometimes teams stop their press once they cross half court. But there are times, too, that Oregon will also kind of throw another trap in here. And they're just wanting to speed games up, speed teams up like here. Now they throw a pass. Evans, again, the defensive versatility, being able to protect the rim, defend on the perimeter, get deflections like this helps a ton. But just they want to force teams into bad decisions like that. And lastly, I do want to go a little bit more through Kwame Evans defensively, what he brings, just because like he is going to be a guy that has to anchor this Oregon defense. Oregon has struggled a little bit defensively for the past couple seasons at times. Um, Evans is going to have to be the guy. He, he's going to have to do a lot of what he did last year, but just on a bigger role. So Oregon, this time they're in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. They will run that as well. Evans in the middle. Flowing kind of into looks like more man-to-man more -man like I'm talking about. But here, so you're going to see he's going to be in that drop coverage too. And we looked at previous plays where he's able to be mobile and get deflections and defend out on the perimeter, but he can also be a legitimate rim protector. And so that drop coverage, like I talked about with Infali Dante to start the defensive stuff, kind of that deep drop, allow guys to drive into him. And then he just has such good athleticism, such good reaction time to be able to come up, get blocks like this, help protect the rim and Oregon needs it. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here for even more Oregon preview content.